Now, what do you call people who believe in things that are not there? The answer is mad people. Because although the Bible says that faith is a gift, it is not the gift of stupidity. 
you put your trust in someone, if you are sure that they are real and true, faith is always a response to truth and reality. God shines a light into this world so that we can see truth, so that we can see reality and respond to it. Faith is the only appropriate response to a God who is real and who has revealed himself and made himself known. Greetings, thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's always our joy and privilege to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God. We have been spending time exploring the subject of faith, and it's, it's good to come back to this subject, uh, to this topic, uh, over and over again, lest we forget some of the things we've heard, or, you know, we get so busy sometimes with, uh, with life, with things that are going on in life, and uh, with the routine things of life, and then we forget that uh, some important essentials concerning our walk of faith. And so it's just good to come back and review and refresh and remind ourselves of things that we have heard. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, you know, let us earnestly give heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. So there are things that we have heard. We've probably been taught about faith. Uh, We've learned about this in the past. Uh, but then we need to go back and earnestly pay attention to it again, then so that we, less, we let them slip and they just get out of our, our usage in our day-to-day lives. As we continue talking about the subject of faith and our building our understanding here on faith, one important area for us to consider is how does the faith, the faith that you and I have in our hearts How does it all matter when it comes to the sovereignty of God and the grace of God? You know, the obvious questions that uh, we may ask is, you know, if God is sovereign, if God is all-powerful, and God does whatever He wants, then why is there a need for me to have faith in God? I mean, wouldn't God just give it to me if He wanted to, or uh, bless me with it because that's what He wants to? Uh, He said he would, so why don't he just do it? Why does he look for faith in my heart? And why is it necessary for me to have faith in my heart to receive something God has already promised? So that's one aspect uh, of of, uh, interaction we need to address. How does faith and the sovereignty of God interplay, interact? The other aspect is grace and faith. Uh, If everything is by grace, which is divine favor, God's benevolence, that God is giving these things to me out of the goodness of his heart, then why do I need to have faith? I mean, anyway, he's good to all. Uh, he's not partial. Uh, he wants to you know, bless everyone equally. Then why would he want to, uh, an individual to have faith? So how does faith and grace interact? You see, these are questions uh, we, we need to address. Now, yes, God is a sovereign God, and the Bible teaches us uh, throughout Scripture about God's sovereignty, of God's omnipotence. And God is all-powerful, nothing uh, He cannot do. Uh, We see this many places in Job 42 and verse 2. Job says, God, I know you can do all things, and no thought of yours can be withheld from you. Psalm 115 verse 3 says, God does as He pleases. You know, God executes what he pleases. Uh, and, and we know when Jeremiah, when Jeremiah says, Lord God, you've made the heavens and the earth. There is nothing too difficult for you. So God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. And he's also sovereign. He's ruler. No one's going to uh, stop him when he wants to do something, when he chooses to do something. So we understand the omnipotence of God. We understand the sovereignty of God, that uh, what he desires will, uh, will go on. But We must also understand that in the matters or in the affairs of men, in the things on the earth, he has placed certain responsibility on man. So in the things that take place in the affairs of men, God says, man, 
I want you involved. We are co-workers with God. He created us in His image so that we could partner with Him. We can work together with Him here on earth. So man has a certain realm of responsibility in the things that take place on the earth and also in our own individual lives. We have responsibility. It is not undermining God's omnipotence or it is not undermining God's sovereignty in any way. But God in His sovereignty has decided that He's going to place a certain amount of responsibility on man and He will only work in response to man fulfilling that responsibility. And so this is where faith comes in. Faith is our responsibility. Faith is me responding to God. Our faith is me res- recognizing the omnipotence of God and saying, God, I open my life to you. I believe in that omnipotence. I invite your omnipotence. I invite your power to come and work in my life. Faith recognizes the sovereignty of God and therefore faith says everything that God has said is good and superior and above everything else that I might be facing. So faith is really you and me fulfilling our side of the responsibility because God has determined uh, this way, this to happen. Now, there are certain things that happen solely because of God's sovereignty in, independent of man's faith. Uh, for instance, the coming of the Messiah. God decided, God did it. The resurrection, God decided, God did it. So there are many things like that. And these are just few examples where God will carry things out sovereignly, independent of the faith of man. Whether anybody believes him or not, he's going to do it. The new heavens and the new earth, whether you believe it or not, God's going to set it up. Uh, God's going to bring about the new heavens and the new earth as he has spoken to the mouth of his prophets. So God will do those things, whether anybody uh, has faith in him or not. But in the normal affairs of man, the day-to-day affairs of man, in your life, in my life, God has placed responsibility on us and he invites us to have faith in him. Now, the other aspect oh, that we must understand is about grace and faith. Grace talks about divine favor. It talks about God's benevolence. And God talks about God just extending his goodness to us. That in his grace, in his mercy, uh, he ex- extends his goodness, the things that he promised, he gives it to us. And in his grace, he makes it available to all people equally. And yet, it will only happen in the lives of those who have faith in him. So God extends it to us by grace. But on our side, he says, those who have faith will, the one, will, be, will be the recipients of what I am freely giving by grace to everyone. So the opportunity is available there for every person. That what God extends to us by grace, it's available to every person, regardless of our age, regardless of our social standing, our ethnic background, our educational background. Regardless of all of these things, what God extends to man by grace, it's available to every person with one condition. God says, you have to receive it personally by faith. Think about salvation. We understand that. That we are saved by grace through faith. That means God is extending it to us by grace. And the salvation is not something we earn or we can attain to ourselves, but God gives it to us by grace. But on our side, we receive it by faith, by believing God. So God is giving everyone an equal opportunity to, um, to receive uh, what he is extending by grace. Uh, each one can have uh, receive it by faith. So we understand this now. The sovereignty of God, the exercise of faith, the grace of God, the exercise of faith. So it means this, that even though God has made promises out of his sovereignty, even though God has determined to extend his goodness out of his grace to all people, there will be people who do not receive what God has promised and what God extends by his grace. Why? Because on their side, they do not fulfill that responsibility of receiving it by faith. But to those of us who respond in faith, 
those who respond in faith, they are the ones who will receive what God has declared or promised out of his sovereignty and what God has promised out of his grace. He says, I, will ex I extend this to you by grace. And those of us who respond by faith, we receive. By grace, we are saved through faith. So I, I hope this, this, this uh, has become clear that from God's side, he's extending it to us out of his sovereignty and his grace. But on our side, man's responsibility is to respond by faith. Now, let's take a, a, a quick look at faith in the Old Testament. You know, we don't necessarily find the words faith or believe uh, very often in the Old Testament, as often as we find it in the New Testament. But this does not mean uh, that people in the Old Testament didn't have faith in God, or this does not mean that people in the Old Testament didn't believe God. Well, in fact, Abraham uh, is the father of faith, as the Bible calls him in Romans, the fourth chapter. So God is pointing to Abraham, an Old Testament uh, patriarch, and says he is the father of faith. Follow his example. So we see people uh, in the Old Testament also living and operating by faith. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, the entirety of the chapter points to men and women in the Old Testament who accomplished, who by faith did what they did. By faith, they obtained a good testimony. They had a good report before God. By faith, they were, uh, they were able to worship God as Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It was by faith that Enoch, the Bible tells us, he was taken up to God and, uh, and uh, uh, he pleased God. How? Because he had faith in God. Now, it does not say necessarily in the Old Testament that Enoch had faith in God. But the New Testament, looking back at Enoch in Hebrews 11 and verse uh, 5, it tells us that Enoch uh, was by faith. He pleased God. He walked with God by faith and he pleased God. And in, in the light of that, in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, the writer of Hebrews says, you know, without faith, we cannot please God. Or if you put it in the positive, faith pleases God. God. And God was so pleased with the faith that Enoch had that God just took him up to heaven, right? So faith pleases God. We must believe that God exists and that God rewards those who diligently seek him. And so in Hebrews 11, going on further there, verse after verse points to different Old Testament characters like Noah, like Abraham and Sarah, and all several other people who through faith experienced experienced the power of God working in their lives. Noah responded to a command from God. He believed that command and he did what God told him to do, even though there was no evidence at that time that there would ever be rain. It had never rained up until Noah's time. But God was saying, Noah, I want you to build an ark and I'm going to cause it to rain. So Noah had to have faith to do that. And so also in our lives, there are times God speaks to us. And he wants us to respond by faith. Think about Abraham. God called him to be the father of a great nation. But he had to step out. He had to make his journey by faith. In fact, the Bible says that Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah received strength to give birth to Isaac. So there was a miracle that took place in her body in response to faith. Don't you think that even today, in our day and time, in response to faith, things can happen physically in our bodies that even today barren wombs can give birth to children. Even today in response to faith, our sicknesses and diseases can be broken off of our bodies. People can be made whole. It, it happened in the Bible. It's recorded for us in the Bible and it's possible even today. God responds to faith today the same way he responded to the faith of people throughout the Bible. He does the same thing. So we see Sarah, how her body was uh, changed because of faith in God. We read about many others. We read about, read about Abraham who was willing to give up something in faith. He gave up Isaac and God you know, gave him Isaac back. We read about Moses who through faith was able to lead the people of God out of Egypt into the land of promise. We read about 
are the men who, uh, Daniel, who stopped the mouth of lions, David, who killed Goliath, Joshua, who saw the walls of Jericho fall. We see the faith of people who receive, women who receive their dead back to life. We see the faith, um, the faith of God working in the lives of people who saw miracles take place, that um, flour and oil and was multiplied, and even in time of famine they were sustained. And so Hebrews 11 lists numerous examples where people saw miraculous things take place in their lives in response to faith. And the same thing will happen today. The power of faith, what can happen in response to faith, has not changed. God is a sovereign God. He's a God of grace, but He's looking for faith in the hearts of people. And like in the Bible, when if you and I walk by faith in God, have faith in God, we will see the works of God take place in our lives, in our circumstances, in our situations, uh, the impossible becomes possible because the Bible clearly teaches us that all things are possible to those who believe. It will happen in your life and mine the same way we see it happen in the Bible. God still responds to faith the same way today as He did in Bible times. So all we need to do is to have faith in God and God will respond to our faith. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in the Word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2019 for the one-year certificate in theology and Christian ministry, two-year diploma in theology and Christian ministry, three-year bachelor's degree in theology and Christian ministry, short-term Bible courses for three months in Varanasi, UP, from September to December in English and Hindi. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College or call us at 99-854-548-99. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA. I trust you enjoyed the telecast today and just us looking at some issues concerning faith, the sovereignty of God and the grace of God, and looking at Old Testament characters, how they, uh, each one of them walked with faith in God and saw the work of God in their lives as, as Hebrews 11th chapter captures for us. So I want to pray with you today. If you and I will have faith in God, things will happen in our lives. There could be some people watching and are listening, and you are in a financial difficulty. Listen, have faith in God. And God can turn that circumstance and situation around. He can bring supernatural provision. We don't have to figure out how. Our responsibility is to have faith in God. There could be those watching or sick and hurting in their bodies. I want you to know that no matter what your physical condition is, God will respond to your faith. And as you and I can join our faith, we can combine our faith and together see a work of God take place. So as I pray, I'm going to pray in faith, believing that God will do something for you right where you are. And on your side, I want you to be expectant. I want you to, by faith, receive what God wants to bring into your life. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone listening, God. I take authority over their financial situation, where there, where there is distress, where there is debt, where there is need. I take authority over that and I release divine provision. I command the provision of God. I command the supply of God to come in. Father, send your supply. Thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who supplies for all of our need. And I speak to that need and I say, you are met. You are supplied for. I speak to that debt and I say, God's supply cancels your presence. 
and the lives of those listening. Pray for those who are hurting, who are sick, may be diseased in their bodies. I take authority over every evil work of sickness and disease and pain and infirmity. And I break it off of their bodies in the name of Jesus. And I release healing now to fill their hearts, minds, bodies, make them whole. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And as uh, you can, write to us, tell us what God is doing in your life as you connect with us through these programs. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. As I was reading Psalm 27, I kept praying and asking God for a fresh revelation and somehow David's strong desire to be in the house of the Lord just jumped out of that passage. And I was reminded of this picture of the prodigal son feeling completely dejected, defeated, lonely, scared. And, and as he's walking back home, he's got his head down and he lifts his head up and he sees his father running towards him with his arms wide open, welcoming him back home. And God's so gracious, he welcomes us back no matter how far we've gone away from him. And no matter how scared we may be, he just brings us back to his home, which is filled with singing, dancing, and it's just such a joyous place to be in. And that picture helped me understand what David was feeling when he said that he wanted he had that strong desire to be in the house of the Lord. In your house I am safe and secure My rock, my tower, Lord, you are my shelter My rock, my tower, Lord, you are my shelter